So in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about working with the spreadsheet program for Lab 6. And again, this is specific for my physical sciences students and the Comparing the Planets lab. Now you'll have a view which is a student view, which will look a little bit like this, but also have some differences in it. And in that view, you want to find the assignment and you want to locate the additional resources. And for part two, there is the planetary data spreadsheet. When you click on that button, it should go ahead and download an Excel spreadsheet file for you. And then you're going to want to open that file up. I'm assuming most of you are going to be using Microsoft Excel. If you don't, you'll be using LibreOffice Calc and things will work similarly. When you first open this up, it's going to show you the data, but it's going to have a warning up here that files from the internet can contain viruses. And we do need to edit it, but this is a file that came from me, so you trust it. We'll go ahead and click on Enable Editing. Now when that happens, you'll notice it pops up an error. I'm not sure why it does this, but in this case, I know that it's OK and we didn't actually lose our data. If for some reason your program and your file opens up with that warning right away, again, just click OK and it should open up just fine. Now we've got the data for the mass and radius for each one of the planets. And we need to calculate the volume and density. Now these are in Earth units, not in normal kilograms or meters. And we're going to use the formula as it's written out in your lab manual. Now notice in the lab manual, it says to enter a formula in cell D7. D refers to which column, seven refers to which row. And up here in Microsoft Excel, the name D7 will show that you're actually in that box versus E7 or D8. So once you make sure you're in the right cell, then you can start to actually type in your formula. And the equal sign is a very important part of this. And for this equation, you're using C7, and then this little symbol that's like a little upwards arrow, that's the number or the symbol that's right above the number six and three. And that actually means it's to the third power or the radius cubed. When you hit enter, it should calculate the value that's in there. And if everything preserved in the formatting, it should have it set so that it's to three decimal places. If for some reason you've got a lot of numbers, there's a place up here on Excel under the number where you can either increase or decrease the decimal points. And if you did have a bunch of numbers, we want to go ahead and decrease that down so that if you look at the decimal plate, there's one, two, three numbers after that decimal place. Once you've got the number, which should be 0 0.056 in this first box, and you've confirmed that that's correct, we want to go ahead and copy that down. Now you don't want to use that same C7 equation in each box. You want it to adjust to the each row number as you go. There's a few ways to do this. One of the easiest ways that most students know is if you come over here to the corner of the box and you just drag it down, it will go ahead and copy those formulas as far down as you drag. But there's another way I want to show you real quick because it's going to be useful if you have a very long list, which we're going to have in some of our future labs. If you place your cursor right over here like we did before, but rather than pushing the mouse button down and dragging, just double click with that left mouse button and it will automatically take the entire column and fill that in. You're going to want to do this and also then use the formula that's supposed to go in E7 and fill that down. And then you're going to take these values and you're going to transfer them into your lab manual. Now you can save the spreadsheet and submit it with your file, but I want you to have these numbers in your lab manual because that lab manual is your lasting resource that you're going to be able to use on your final exam. So make sure that you record that information and then use that data 
to answer the questions in your lab manual. If you have any difficulties with it, please contact me. If you're not using the Microsoft Excel, but you're using the free replacement software, the LibreOffice Calc, it should work very similarly, but if you have any questions, just let me know.